Okay, a few weeks ago, I told you to steer clear of a fresh face IPO called a Survey Monkey, SVMK, I should call it, Survey Monkey. This is how you probably know it. It's a popular cloud based provider of online survey software, better known as Survey Monkey. Why did I do this? Well, the stock had just vaulted from 12 bucks, where it came public, to $15.70. And I wasn't wild about that price, it was too expensive. Then SVMK pulled back to 10 and changed during that big October meltdown. And I wish I had recommended it there, because last night the company reported a strong quarter, sent the stock flying up $1.48 or 13% today. And remember, there's a bad day for tech. SVMK delivered a smaller than expected earnings loss, higher than anticipated sales, up 18% year over year, while average revenue per user increased by nearly 15%. And look, even after today's rebound, the stock is up less than a dollar from its IPO price. So could SVMK be worth buying here? Let's take a closer look with Xander Lurie. He is the CEO of SVMK. To get a better read on the quarter and his company's prospects, Mr. Lurie, welcome to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Nice Thank you. you. First, I want to tell you, my wife's on the board of a college. And I asked her, I said, do you know Survey Monkey? And she goes, yes, we use them. I said, well, why did you choose me? And she said, well, there's nobody else who does what you do. That's our favorite response. It does seem like you do have a hammer lock on this particular kind of business. We created the category in 1999. We've been growing ever since. Uh, 20 million questions are answered every single day on our platform. So it is the leading category leader. Um, you know, human beings can come on ask questions, collect feedback from the people who matter to them. And that really is what's so special about our software. We sit in between a human being asking another human being questions to collect that sentiment, to collect those opinions, and that is how you do better. I want to know, do you think that the IPO gave you some more visibility? I said that because this was a rally, really a radical uh, acceleration in your growth this quarter. The IPO was a huge opportunity for us to really introduce our enterprise platform to companies. Every CEO you bring on this set, CFO, yes, they're talking about tariffs. Yes, they're talking about inflation. But you know what's really driving business today? How are my employees feeling? How is the belonging and inclusion of my African-American employees? Talk to me about what Asian employees are thinking about our new employee benefits. NPS, customer centricity, the cultural issues are what really are mattering to CEOs and CFOs in the boardroom, and that's how people use SurveyMonkey. Now, you also, uh, when we were out at Dreamforce, signed a big deal with Mark Benioff, whom I know is an investor, and paid roughly these prices for it. But what does that mean? Because we know Salesforce is a big force in business. So this is a huge opportunity for Salesforce has really taught everybody how enterprise SaaS works. We're going to school on Benioff's playbook. The biggest use case around CRM, people use our our software for customer experience. How do I do better by my customers? And how can I find my next set of customers? And so that's how you really have to measure the quality of your products, the quality of your campaigns. So we have an integration that we sell to Salesforce customers, and we're working closely with them on product development, marketing initiatives. We're steering into those partners, and that's a real differentiator from our competitors. We're an open platform. So Microsoft, Slack, Google, right. Adobe, Salesforce, we really are Switzerland, and our products, that, that data flows seamlessly into those other systems of record. Okay, well, we were concerned when we did the write-up. We weren't. You were. I was saying we were concerned that you weren't, I <laughs> did true, that, that you weren't, that you've been around since 1999, and we're looking for some profits, and we didn't see any. Now, I mean, you can adjust some things, but it is true that the company's not made a lot of money. Gap nanny come true, but right. you know stocks better than anybody in the world, and you know cash is what matters. And yes. so let's talk about our business. Okay, let's hear it. Last, uh, this quarter in Q3, we delivered 18% year-over-year revenue growth okay. on track for a, a similar number year-over-year -year for, for the fiscal year. Our cash flow, 17% margin, adjusted EBITDA, 26% margin. Right. And so when you look at our ability to generate cash, why are we so successful doing that? 90% of our revenue is derived from subscriptions. When we go to bed on December 31st, 75% of our next year's revenue is either booked on the balance okay. sheet or it's renewable with our existing customers. So it's a super sticky customer base. And as we upsell to the enterprise, we see that revenue uplift go 4x. So we get a big collection of self-serve users in the enterprise. And then when we sign an enterprise deal with some of the 300,000 organizations that use our products, see a big uplift in revenue and that revenue retention. This is going to be a really healthy cash generative business for a long time, and over time we will be net income positive. It's okay. very rare that new issues are net income positive. Fair enough. Now, uh, your, uh, Tom, Thomas Hill, your president, talked about an acquisition SAP made uh, for a company called Qualtrics, and it seemed like that they, if you just had to look at it on employees and revenues, it would value, if it really were complimentary, I know there's 10% overlap, it would value your company at a substantially higher valuation than the public market. I'm all in favor of that. It's true, though. So, SAP is a real company. SAP is a big company, and I think the, this $8 billion acquisition validated just how big this category is. This is a multi, multi-billion dollar global category. There are hundreds of thousands of organizations who need 
to buy enterprise software to measure the sentiments of their employees, of their customers. So if you look at our competitor here, um, they're going to be owned by SAP. It's a right. large. We have to worry about that. SAP is a lot of company, and we have Google, which also has its own kind of survey system. Yeah, These Google is, is is not a competitor. We see a lot of um, we see a lot of our paid customers who move into SurveyMonkey because of our features. But if you look at our competitor here, they're going to be a division of SAP, large ERP European right. company. We're steering into where Microsoft and Salesforce and Adobe and Google have real market leadership. I think from a cultural standpoint, it's going to be a real advantage for us. And so kudos to the folks at Qualtrics. I love our competitive positioning today. Well, I want to circle back to this notion that what you talked about at the top, because I think it's really important. We didn't really used to care what people think in our companies. I worked at a company, not even mentioned, but all they cared about was whether I made a lot of money. Yeah. All I cared about was whether I made a lot of money. It was a different era. Now people care about different things. Yeah. But they can't figure it out. How do they figure it out other than to bring you in? Well, thank you for that, that it's advertisement. True. It's true. I mean, if you look at today, it's the tightest labor market in history, right. especially in technology. We are all in the technology industry. Every right. single CEO you interview up here, his or her industry is being affected by technology. Amazon is running retailers off the road. Right. Why? Because they don't understand what's going on with their employees, with their customers. And it's the best CEOs who are really investing in the culture of their company and understanding what employee benefits are going to matter in the future. And you can use SurveyMonkey in ways to learn the insights you need to be a better CEO, be a better CMO, better you know, leader of HR. Well, I've used it many times and actually uh, been a client, and I want to thank you so much. That is Xander Lurie, L-U-R-I-E, and he's the CEO of SVMK, which you might know as SurveyMonkey. Man, money's back in. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.